Hi there, I'm Jen. And today I'm going to be spinning in my cowgirl boots and telling the tale of the Emperor's New Clothes. And you've probably heard this one before because it's kind of popular. And it's one that kids like. The kids in the story get to be the smart ones. So it, we're going to open with an emperor who's very vain and very shallow and all he cares about is his clothes. He has a new outfit to wear every single day. And that's what he spends his money on, or I should say his country's money, because we know that's what politicians like to spend other people's money. And he always spends it on clothes, not his soldiers or his people or roads or infrastructures or schools or even going out to movies and uh, bars and theaters and he just spends all his money on clothes and he thinks about his clothes non-stop and everybody knows this so a couple of crafters two men get this really brilliant idea and they get an appointment with the emperor and they tell him hey we're weavers. In fact, we're the best weavers around, and we can make clothes like no one else. And he says, oh, really? Because I like clothes. And they said, yeah, we heard that about you. Well, tell me more about what you can do. Okay, we will. We can make clothes that are so fine and so special that only a certain kind of people can see them. In fact, you have to be kind of smart to see the clothes, to see our designs, the lower orders, the less intellectual, the really dumb people, you know, they can't see, they can't really see what we do. It takes a special kind of person. And he says, uh-huh, uh -huh. well, you know, I am, the emperor says, I am, I am, I am special. I'm very, very, very special. I'm the emperor. And they said, yes, we know. That's why we came to you. We would like to make you our very finest outfit. And the emperor thinks this over for about 15 seconds. And he says, yes, because not only will he have this super duper special outfit, but, and he'll be able to wear it all around and look really cool. He will be able to use this set of clothes to figure out who's smart and who's not. And maybe like who he should keep around in his court and who he should get rid of and who's overqualified for their job. So, he sets the two weavers up in their own room with their two looms and he pays them sacks full of gold and they say, uh-huh, yeah, but don't go anywhere because we're going to need like, like all the yarn. Oh, well, right, right, right. What do you need? Well, we need only the best. You know, we want gold thread and fine spun silks in every color. So the king hands that over and leaves so that they can get to work. Now, our two crafters, a.k.a. thieves, take all of that really kicking yarn and they put it in their yarn bag. And uh, they don't use it, of course. Because you know the story. You know how the story goes. They set up their looms, and then they start pretending to warp, you know, with air. And it's all like air guitar. Well, this is going to be air weaving. And they pretend to weave, and, and in their pretend weaving, they're very fast. And people come, and they sort of peek through the door and check on them, and, and uh, but they can't really get a good look. So, after about a week, the emperor decides he really wants to know what's going on and how his new clothes are coming along. But he doesn't want to seem too eager uh, because he's the emperor and, you know, he's kind of stuck up and silly and foolish. So he sends his one of his old men in his council, one of his learned, oldest, wisest men, to go check out his new clothes. Because politicians have nothing better to do, I suppose. The old man comes to the room where they are pretending to weave. And he walks in and he looks at the loom and, of course, there's nothing on it. And he thinks, oh, crap. I can't see the emperor's new clothes. 
which means that I'm not as smart as I thought I was. And everyone's going to know it. And I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to lose my cushy politician, don't have to do anything, and get a lot of money job. Huh. I'm completely screwed. And so the weavers look up from their pretend uh, air weaving and say, oh, what do you think? It's coming along quite well, don't you? Don't you agree? And the old man blinks and says, oh, yes, yes, it's, it's quite beautiful. In fact, I'm very impressed. And I love the colors. And that's when the two thieves look at each other and they have that silent communication and they say, oh, yeah, baby, this is going to work out great. So, one of the weavers starts telling him all about the design that they're using and the pattern and where it came from, and he's just totally making it up. I mean, he's pulling it right out of his butt. But the old man plays along, and he pulls out a pair of spectacles, and he walks over, and he bends down really close to the loom that has nothing on it, and he pretends to take a really good look, and mostly he's just memorizing everything that the weavers tell him uh, about what this, these clothes are supposed to look like so that he can go back and tell the king. And he does. He tells the king, oh, it's coming along great. It's, it's uh, really beautiful. And, and there are amazing colors. And it's, it's all this, this, this pattern. And, and you're going to be very, very pleased, Emperor. Jesse King? Emperor. And the Emperor thinks, okay, good. I can't wait. And, you know, he really can't wait. So... After like a whole day, he sends another set of his advisors down just to go see what they, if they've made any progress, you know, go see how they're doing and, and tell them I really, really, really want my new clothes. Like, now. So the two guys go and visit the weavers and they walk in and, you know, they can't see, there's nothing on those looms, they can't see anything. So. They do just like the old man. They pretend that it's beautiful, and I and, and it's and and uh, what 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 the old man said. The colors are wonderful. The, the old man said, "Yes, the colors are very interesting, and we love the design." Um, and the king wants to know when his uh, very special, very beautiful clothes here are going to be finished. And and we ever say, "Um, pretty soon." But you know what? We're gonna need some more yarn. And only the best for these clothes. But we're going to need you some more. And you better go fetch those right now. So they do. And they bring back, you know, another whole batch of gold thread and silks and whatnot. And hand it over. And the weavers say, yes, thank you very much. Now leave because we are very busy. And when they leave, they take those uh, awesome yarns and they stick them right in their yarn bag. And go back to their air, magical pretend air weaving. And after a few days, they pretend that the weaving is done, and they take it off the looms, and they cut it, and pretend to sew it, and make a full set of clothes. Ta-da! All done. And they call. They let, they let the emperor know, hey, it's ready for you. It's ready to be fitted. And when the emperor comes with all of his advisors to check out his fancy new clothes, guess what? No one can see them. And guess what? Everyone pretends that they can, including the emperor, because there is no way at all that the emperor is going to admit that he can't see these clothes, especially with everyone standing around him, telling him that they can see them. The emperor realizes, I'm not smart enough to see these clothes, and there's no, huh? We have to take that secret to our grave. Can't let everybody know that I'm a dummy. So, the, the emperor uh, starts to undress the clothes, he has to take off the clothes he's wearing, and the crafters decide they're going to have a little fun with him and say, oh, no, we, you know, you can keep going because we've made you everything from undergarments on, absolutely everything in this outfit. Oh, go oh, good, the emperor says, and so he takes off everything, and then he's standing there naked, like completely naked. And they pretend to dress him in the clothes that, of course, don't exist. And everybody watches. And 
The crafters really take their time and they pretend to do a little bit of tailoring here and there and some adjustments and they take in seam and the emperor has to stand there naked. I wonder if he's cold. I've always wondered if he got cold. Uh, anyway, so after like a few hours of this, the two weavers announce, okay, it's done. What does everyone think? Oh, it's lovely. Oh, clap, 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 clap. Oh, this is more. Oh, it's so, you know, it's so beautiful. It's blinding me. In fact, uh, I think, uh, I think I can't quite look at the emperor the way he is right now. So, let's show off your new outfit to all the people who, of course, have been hearing the gossip about the emperor's new clothes for weeks, and they're ready to see him, too. And, his subjects are lined up outside in the street waiting to see if they can see the special outfit that only smart people can see and to see if their neighbors can see the special outfit that only smart people can see and they're going to find out who's smart and who's not and everyone's really been looking forward to this so let's uh, grab the ends of the emperor's train on his very special very elaborate coat that he's obviously wearing right right and uh, I'll tell you what, you hold that end, and you hold that end, and every and let's let's walk out and show the people. So they do. Uh, his little advisors pretend to pick up his train, and every and they follow along, and everyone else follows along behind them, and the emperor walks out into the street stark naked. And the people see him, and none of them can see the clothes, and they look at each other and realize um, they can't, uh, and, and there's no way they're going to admit that they can't see the clothes either. So people start to cheer, and they start to shout compliments. Oh, what beautiful colors! Oh, that's me! I wish I could, I wish I could spin and weave and so like that. Wouldn't that be amazing if I could have an outfit like that and look, uh, just like the emperor. And so he walks down the street, completely naked, with a whole bunch of people pretending to follow along on holding his clothes. And everyone watches and cheers, and everyone pretends that he's not completely naked, except for one small child. One small little boy. You, you know that it's an obnoxious little You know this is like a six-year-old obnoxious little boy that's kind of dirty, and his nose is running. And um, the kind of kid that you clean him up and set him outside, and within two minutes he's, he's covered in dirt and filth. And he shouts out, Mommy, why is the emperor naked? And everybody goes dead silent like a stone dropping down a well. And that's when all the grown-ups realize there are no clothes. And the emperor is just naked. And then they realize we better keep pretending that he has clothes because he's the emperor. And, you know, he could, he could wipe you out and take your house and, and, and don't piss off the politicians. So all the grown-ups keep pretending that the emperor has a fabulous set of new clothes and that he's not naked. And the emperor pretends that he has clothes on and he's not naked. And he keeps walking down the street and everyone keeps pretending to hold up his train and follow along and they shower him with compliments that everybody knows is not true and everyone knows his clothes are not real and all the grown-ups pretend and all the kids start whispering and talking to each other and trying to figure out why are the grown-ups being so stupid? The end. Except, is that really the end? I mean, you know, I always wondered what happened to the weavers. I mean, they got paid for clothes that they didn't make. But more importantly, they, they made out with, like, the best yarn in the land. And I wonder, did they have to go on the run with their yarn stash? I mean, did the emperor try and hunt them down, or did he just give up and, and go on pretending for the rest of his life that this was his favorite outfit? Did he go on... Like every, like every, you know, second Thursday, did he put on his special outfit and walk around naked to keep up the delusion? Or did he hunt those crafters down and try and get his yarn back and his money back and his dignity back? You know, I like to think that the crafters got away with it. I like to think that they got away with their golden thread and their silks in every single color. 
and that they made really awesome clothes for themselves and kept them and didn't give them to anybody, which is what you should do. I'm going to end this little spinning cowgirl boots with a note of my personal philosophy, which I tell every single person that I have ever met ever. Make gorgeous, yummy, warm things and keep them. Don't give them away. Be selfish about it because you deserve it more than anybody else. Hope you enjoyed that and come back because I do about it. I do a spinning cowgirl boots like once every two weeks. So if you like little sarcastic stories told and watching me spin, come back. <laughs>